Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have another really cool Mattel Jurassic World Dominion release, and this time we have one of the massive action figures. We have the Ampelosaurus, and this was a really cool species to get because we don't have too many figures of it, but also because I did not expect Mattel to release one. It's a really neat species of sauropod, though it's a little bit off-putting because the tail is incredibly short. Like, they should have definitely, like, disconnected the tail and put a longer tail on this one because the short tail really takes away a lot from this figure if you ask me but if the tail had been longer it would have looked a million times better but even still it's definitely a really neat really unique take on the ampelosaurus and it's pretty darn awesome to have another sauropod in the line you can see as far as the box art goes again it's your standard dominion box art and then when we turn it around here to the back you could see a nice image of the ampelosaurus as well as a look down here at another of the current massive action figures that are out the yangshuanosaurus i don't know if this means that this is like the second wave and now the quetzalcoatlus is retired or what exactly but we only have the yangshuanosaurus down here currently but still again i'm really excited about this even if the tail is a bit obnoxious looking i'm psyched to get this figure here and take a look at it so let's pop it out of the box right now and here is our ampelosaurus and again it looks really nice except for the tail the tail is absolutely driving me insane because when it comes to a sauropod that is just so short uh definitely a really nice very highly detailed sculpt and a pretty nice looking paint job mostly but that tail being short is like driving me insane it's almost like the hammond collection velociraptor where i just couldn't get past the larger feet on it this is a similar situation with the ampelosaurus where i just can't deal with how short the tail is just it just is driving me insane but the figure as a whole still definitely looks really nice. I'm actually quite a big fan of the majority of what I see here. So let's go ahead, jump straight to a closer look. So starting up here at the head sculpt of our Ampelosaurus, you can see some pretty nice looking skin texture there in the face. It's not anything amazing, nothing to write home about, but it does look pretty good. You can see the same style of skin texture here for the lower jaw. Not so much of a scaling look on this one more so just a lot of like really cool skin texture kind of creasing and things like that pretty darn nice looking head sculpt though you can see the mouth and jaw is articulated it actually looks really nice once the mouth is closed i wish you had the opportunity to do that rather than having the action feature with the mouth open it looks neat with the mouth closed so it would have actually been probably nicer to have it displayed with the mouth closed if this were just an articulated jaw you've got a nicely painted eye with a kind of like a mustard type of a color the pupil is definitely the same darker brown that you see overtaking the majority of the head but there's a nice gloss coat and since that coloration is so dark i don't think it takes away from the figure sometimes it's like a really weird color that they choose to use over the top of the head and then they use it for the pupil like the uh, previously released Sinoceratops really took away from that one Sinoceratops release, but this time it doesn't look too bad. You can see the inside of the mouth has some really nice coloration to it, and it is on the upper side of the inside of the mouth as well. Nice pinkish tone in there, beautiful gloss coat. You can see the teeth are painted with an off-white, and they are very nicely done. There's no sloppiness that I can see up there or on the lower jaw as far as the teeth go. Nice sculpting for the teeth, nice sculpting, nice textured look for the tongue. Very nicely done inside of the mouth. As you move back here, you start to see again like bumps and ridges and everything picking up all over this figure. It is a very armored sort of a looking sauropod. And this is always kind of how it looks for this type of dinosaur. So they did a good job of kind of giving it that somewhat armored type of a look. You can see some gorgeous skin creasing here right behind the lower jaw though in the neck region of the dinosaur. Again, the skin texture looks really nice. We have a nice dark brown that runs down from the upper side of the dinosaur and overtakes the majority of the upper part of the dinosaur. You do have some light grays there in the face that kind of splotch around behind and in front of the eye area and then underneath. And then you have kind of a sort of like an off-white here for the lower jaw that does run down into the throat region. And then we have like a nice reddish brown coloration for a lot of the body, almost a similar tone of color to what we saw in the colossal Carnotaurus not long ago. But as you continue to move down the course of the neck, you can again see that we have a plethora of ridges and osteoderms and stuff littering this entire figure. Really nice smooth transition to the lighter coloration here of the throat. You can see that we have a pretty nicely detailed underside to the dinosaur, but the light coloration in typical Mattel fashion starts to transition away before we even reach the chest region of our dinosaur 
but you can again see that we have more of that darker brown kind of running down and designing through the course of the upper side of the dinosaur. You see some larger ridges picking up here on the top of the spinal column right there, really impressively large ridges right there. And you can continue to see that nice look as far as the skin texture goes. It's a little hard to pick up on it in certain areas because there's so much going on with this figure, but it definitely sports some nice skin texture. You can again see that we also have something that Mattel's been doing a lot lately, and that's kind of like this splotchy coloration that they add. Sometimes it doesn't look too good. Sometimes it looks like paint mishaps and paint errors, but here on this one, I think it looks really good because it actually just adds a nice amount of coloration to the figure that otherwise would not be present. Like we would have the, probably that speckling but here, I definitely think it looks nicer with the way that they've added that kind of splotchy coloration in there. Very nice dark tone, which looks really good through the entire figure as far as that goes. But we don't see it everywhere. We basically see it just here in the body because we don't see it here in the legs. We don't see it up here in the neck. Well, maybe a little bit, but we definitely don't see it out here on the tail which is a little bit of a downside. It would have been cool to have that coloration through the entire figure, adding in just, you know, a little bit more depth to the paint job, but unfortunately that is not the case. Super nice looking skin texture here as you lead down into the stomach region. You can again see some skin detail down here leading to the underside. Really nicely sculpted legs, a few more kind of osteoderms leading down before you get down into the front leg. Nice muscle definition through the entire front leg. You've got a really nicely sculpted out foot with some nicely sculpted nails. No, there's not really a glossy look to the nails or anything. Definitely no nail paint, but not even really a gloss coat, which is weird because you can see here there isn't. But when you come back here, there absolutely is. In fact, it's almost an overbearing glossy look to the rear leg. Actually, not even just the nails. It's definitely on the nails significantly, but the entire rear leg almost has a little bit of a glossy look to it. But as you lead back up here into the top of the dinosaur, again, you can see how that darker brown disappears here before we ever reach the tail and then again we have gigantic clusters of bumpy osteoderms and ridges and everything through the entire side of the dinosaur leading down into the thigh for sure you can see they are absolutely everywhere you've got a nice looking kneecap there in the front of the dinosaur nice muscle definition running down the thigh and down into the calf and some phenomenal looking skin texture that is definitely for sure leading down into that foot sculpt pretty nice looking foot sculpt down here as well nicely sculpted out toes and again lots of glossy paint added to the rear leg of the dinosaur and then leading back up here as we lead out into the tail you can again see some more really nice skin texture you can see some more of that splotchy coloration and it just ends so abruptly unfortunately as we lead out into the tail and you can again see that we sort of have almost like a speckling i can see here and there but there's not really too much of that splotchy color that i'm picking up on it almost looks like there might be a little bit right there but i can't really see it too well but as we lead out the length of the tail, again, we have some more of those ridges, some more of those kind of bumpy osteoderms and stuff throughout as we hit the tip of the tail very quickly. The tail is just disgustingly short on this Ampelosaurus, unfortunately. The underside does sport some really nice looking skin texture, though, which is definitely nice to see. You've got the Jurassic logo there on the underside of the foot, and you can see more of that splotchy alternate coloration mixed within the underside of our Ampelosaurus. You're not going to see too much difference over here because, again, there's not really much difference that Mattel can deliver on one side compared to the previous side. You can see that the paintwork, though, looks pretty good, very nice and precise there in the face as far as the coloration and everything goes nice detailing throughout and then as you lead down you can see that we have a difference in the positioning of the legs though and the legs are definitely different like you can see this leg is picking up off of the ground you can even see the bend in the wrist as the leg is leaving the ground nice muscle definition throughout beautiful skin texture as well and it is nice to see kind of a walking movement for the dinosaur as it's definitely taking a step and you can see this leg compared to the opposing side is definitely trailing it's a little bit further behind than what we see over there and this does allow you a little bit of a clearer look here at the stomach region showing off again how incredible the skin texture is and all of the fine detail through the entire course of the figure and one thing that is pretty neat is the scan coat is right here and it's not quite as visible as it often is due to the ridge kind of you know sort of obscuring it kind of hiding it let's see if we can get that up here for you to add that to your collection if you would choose to there you go you can see the scan code for the Ampelosaurus but Definitely a really neat looking figure. It would have been a million times better if that tail were longer. The tail is just like such a travesty on this 
figure but outside of the tail again that sculpt is actually really cool really nicely done very unique looking figure here from Mattel and a really neat species they've chosen to create as far as articulation goes on our Amplosaurus you can see that we do have the articulated jaw which works really nicely it's just unfortunate we can't just articulate it to close it part of the action feature you also have articulation in this spot of the neck which can go left and right uh, kind of goes up and down as well and you can see that same deal for this part of the neck right here where we meet the body same deal as far as left and right but you can kind of see how the head and everything's following it because that would be part of the action feature and then you also have articulation in the legs forward and back they do actually come out away from the body a little bit here on the front legs and then forward and back on the rear legs also come out away from the body a little bit but not too much and then you also have articulation in the tail that also helps to kind of activate the action feature of course being a massive action figure you do have a button back here to activate so straight away we can chomp the jaws works pretty good and then of course the tail operates the neck of our dinosaur it can make it go left right up down we've got quite a bit of range here when it comes to the movement of the neck which is pretty fun definitely a neat action feature it's always pretty cool when mattel uses that on their figures but it's definitely a pretty cool figure nice articulation to it and nice action feature for a size it is really quite large and being a massive action figure you would expect it to be so you're looking lengthwise at about 14 and a half inches or around 37 centimeters and then height wise about six inches or closing in on 15 and a half i'd say a little over 15 centimeters or closing in on 15 and a half but for a size comparison there is mr papo t-rex the attack pack colovasaurus and mr robert muldoon from the mattel jurassic world toy line next to our ampelosaurus from mattel the massive action ampelosaurus and you could definitely see again that it sports a pretty darn impressive size absolutely towering over even the papo rex who is a pretty large figure but for another size comparison there is the kenner young rex you could see again not too large of a figure but it's a figure that so many people usually have if you are a fan of the kenner line that's one that pretty much everybody had so it's one that i like to bring in for a comparison for another comparison we've got a few mattel figures as we have a dilophosaurus a monolophosaurus and the extreme damage velociraptor here next to the ampelosaurus again showing off that it has an absolutely massive size like the name says it has so for another comparison there is the roar striker scorpiovenator another pretty big figure himself and you can definitely see that again the Ampelosaurus is quite a bit longer, just generally larger in body mass. And for another comparison, face to face, we have the other massive action figure that was there on the back of the box as we have the Yangshuanosaurus now next to our Ampelosaurus. Again, showing you that both are really quite large figures and also showing you again that the Ampelosaurus sports a very impressive size. So this brand new Mattel Jurassic World Dominion Massive Action Ampelosaurus is definitely a really cool figure to have a release with Mattel. Definitely a really neat sauropod. It's awesome to have new sauropods entering the line, especially now having some that are kind of smaller, which we sort of get stuff like babies and everything from time to time, but we don't get too many sauropods that aren't huge like the Brachiosaurus, the Apatosaurus, the Dreadnoughtus, things like that. So it's awesome to have a species of sauropod like this that's a little bit smaller, but still quite large and impressive. The sculpt is phenomenal when it comes to the fine detail. There is just a ton of fantastic skin texture to it. Lots of really nice fine detail throughout. Beautiful osteoderms, beautiful ridges, all sorts of armored type of detail through the entire course of the figure, pretty much exactly as we would like to see on an Ampelosaurus and kind of exactly like I would expect a Mattel version to look like you can also see that we have some nice paintwork through the course of the figure i think the tones of color they had chosen for it are really nice and natural definitely a beautiful color scheme that they've chosen that's not overly flashy but still looks like it 100 percent could be the coloration of the figure of course the coloration and paintwork isn't the best in the world just because there's not enough of it the coloration of the underside that lighter tone ends really abruptly in the throat and then we have no more of that coloration running down the course of the underside it really could have looked better with more of that running along the underside and the darker brown from the back there ends before we even reach the tail which also doesn't look that great definitely would have looked nicer had the paint run all the way out onto the tail i do like the splotchy coloration they've added to this one which sometimes it doesn't look so great but it does look good on this one i would have preferred it to be a little more abundant in every area not just the 
you know, torso, but it is what it is, I guess. The action feature and articulation is also really nice. Again, kind of what you expect when it comes to a massive action type of a dinosaur figure. So that is also a plus. The only big downside I have would be some of the paintwork and the tail being incredibly short. The tail is so short, it is an absolute eyesore and really takes away from the figure as a whole. But looking from halfway through the tail up to the head, it's a beautiful figure. Just it needed more paint, like nail paint, more coloration to the underside, more of that darker coloration running out onto the tail, and maybe more of that splotchy coloration contained within the stomach and, you know, the torso in general to just really be all over the place would have looked a lot better. And if the tail had been a bit longer, it really would have been a beautiful figure. The lack of tail length on it, though, is definitely a huge downside for this figure. As a whole, though, it's still a really neat figure, one that I'm happy to see entering the Mattel line. And again, awesome to have a new sauropod in the Mattel line. So if you are interested in this, I will include a link in the description to where you can purchase this on Big Bad Toy Store, which is where I purchased mine. So make sure you check the link down in the description. Head on over there, grab yourself this massive action Mattel Ampelosaurus, and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.